So um, analytics, um, we have been working on this for quite some time. Uh, one of the things uh, about Client Circle and before, as we were called Rocket Referrals, is that we are a very uh, data uh, heavy company. Uh, we spend a lot of time analyzing data and looking at data to help you know, drive the communications that we're sending to your clients. And a lot of times we use that data to run our referral algorithm to find out who's most likely to refer or to determine the best time to send a communication uh, or even the types of campaigns that we should put into journeys and all of these other uh, tools. And we're using the data internally, uh, but we haven't really had a great platform to show you some of the data that we are using to make some of these decisions. And uh, we thought, you know, let's spend some time in really building a great interface to allow you to dig into your data and look at it on a regular basis, a daily basis, or uh, how often, however often you would like to, to really be able to dig in. So today I'm going to talk about analytics uh, for people that have accounts. This has actually been live for a couple of weeks. So maybe you've been in and you've looked at it and um, we're surprised to see it in there, but uh, this is uh, what it is. So. Um, Today is mostly going to be demo day. I'm going to uh, really dig in and show you a lot of the, the dashboards that we have available. And I'm going to talk a little bit about our roadmap and where we're going with the analytics and how it's going to be on the account. Because what you see today is the start, but we're working on a lot of other things um, in the future as well. So uh, let's dig into it. So we're going to see analytics in action. I'm going to just flip over to my screen and uh, I'm going to turn my video off somehow. Let me see. Cam off that way. Uh, you get a little bit more of the screen view. There we go. Uh, so going to start with our dashboard or sorry, our overview page. So um, on overview, this is the place where you're going to be able to see um, a lot of charts that you might, as you go through analytics, kind of set up filters and things that you want to see on a regular basis, and then you can add them to your own overview. We get you started with an overview uh, that we think is a good place to start, um, such as product count, and it's broken down by uh, category. We have premium broken down by category, and then also active premium over time. Uh, and that is uh, as of this year. So you can kind of see this particular mock agency is doing pretty well this year. A little bit of a slowdown here in August, but um, you know, they have been steadily increasing by quite a bit. So uh, this is just a demo account, by the way, if you see some weird looking data in there, it's because it's all randomly generated. Um, so customer count, we can show a customer count quickly and then also dips in retention. I mean, it's really nice to see, okay, we have March here uh, that has a little bit of uh, a churn compared to other months. Now, a lot of analytics tools might stop right there. They might say, okay, this is a great chart uh, to see customer uh, accounts or retention and things like that. But you might be wondering what happened here. And so we made it really easy for you to be able to see why might that um, you know, retention be an issue. And so what we can do is very quickly uh, open up a what happened here view and show you what campaigns were run that month. I can see that we've done some new customer surveys. We've done some periodic customer surveys, uh, some, and then also quickly see what was opened and clicked at that time. I can then go look at net promoter score. And I see that I have a couple of negative scores and it's potential that those particular customers, um, you know, we lost that month. And now we can really quickly see why that's the case. And so this is one of the most important things about our tool. And that is the fact that uh, we will um, combine the communications tool with your analytics, but also your results from net promoter scores, online reviews, and all kinds of other things to really see that comprehensive look at how your business is doing and what's impacting the things you know that are that are happening. So the what happened here feature is something that we're going to continually enhance and make better, but we think is very different and super valuable uh, compared to other uh, just normal reports that are out there. Of course, on every chart that you see, you're going to be able to click the download button 
and see all of the uh, you know results in a spreadsheet. So anytime you see this little download cloud button, you're going to be able to download those things. Of course, then we can even still in that same range of what happened here, can quickly look at product changes and see, OK, I had 60 new policies. I had 35 terminations, 166 renewals. Um, so coming very soon, you're going to be able to drill down into these uh, 35 terminations and see exactly who is on that chart and uh, be able to get that data. So that's one enhancement that we have coming very soon. So we can continue to scroll down on our overview page. We can see email engagement as well, just overall engagement uh, for all of the campaigns that you're running. And then we have a really nice premium retention chart so you can look at premium retention. And um, you know maybe additionally what has been churned at that specific time. Now, this is our overview and you might be wondering, but I wanna see more detail. Um, I wanna see more information about these things. And so for that reason, we have um, our more, uh, we have a dashboard for all of these different types of charts. And I'm gonna pick a few of these to go over today and to show you, but of course, I'm not gonna get into all of the detail for that. You're definitely gonna wanna talk to one of your account managers. And if you're not a customer, uh, then we can have a salesperson give you a, a more in-depth um, overview as well. So just keep that in mind. I'm probably not going to hit all of the details here, but I'm going to try and hit the highlights. So uh, we're on our product dashboard here. And one of the things that we make it really easy to do is to just change the date range. And what's really neat about this is that we automatically are going to aggregate that based upon uh, the selection that you have. So for example, if I do year to date, you can see it's automatically going to start to aggregate that by month, which is nice because then I can look at a full month of data at once. Uh, and then if I would like, I could even go to a day view. If I really wanted to see how this information changed every day, I can do that. And you can see there is quite um, a slowdown here in this month. And we, we might dig into that and, and start to understand why. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put us back on month view because I think that helps me kind of zoom out. But you can see how quickly it is to zoom out and zoom into to different data. And we really like that. Okay, so uh, right now we're looking at commercial and personal accounts. But um, today, maybe I'm not so much interested in commercial, but I want to look at personal auto uh, homeowners and uh, renters insurance. And it's just that quick. Now I can filter by those different types. Um, if I would like to, I could do the same filter down here and then compare my commercial uh, with my um, uh, personal as well. So uh, we make it really easy for you to change this data. Um, now, let's say I want to put this chart on my overview page. Uh, very simply, I just click Save Visualization here. I can give it a nice name, uh, Personal Breakdown, and I can save on Overview. I could update the filters if I wanted to, and then I just hit this checkbox, and it's going to be on my Overview page, just like the pages that uh, I showed you, or the Overview page that I showed before. So that's a really good way to uh, save a chart save a visualization and uh, see what's up there. So um, one of the things that I'm probably not going to drill into today in the demo here, but we also allow you to quickly flip between what's active and what's up for renewal. So if you click on up for renewal, you can set your date to the future and then see what product types are going to be up for renewal in any specific time. Um, then coming very soon, Again, we're going to allow, allow that drill down. You'll be able to start campaigns based upon that data. Uh, so you'll be able to say, what's up for renewal in these specific types within this range? And then I want to create a campaign for those people and target them. So you're using the data to find trends and then target those people with communication. So uh, we really like uh, this filter uh, section over here to be able to do that. So I'm going to click reset filter, and it's just going to take me back to uh, the beginning. Of course. If we continue to scroll down, we're further breaking down the products by uh, premium, again, in those specific types, and uh, commercial and personal list uh, breakdown as well. Again, there's that nice little download button that you can click and be able to get all of the data that's in this uh, spreadsheet. Again, if I were to aggregate by day, I would see every day what my uh, premium was uh, for those specific types. Okay, so. Um, 
I want to dig in a little bit more because uh, I want to start to understand how does this product count and premium different based upon certain customer segments. And one of the things that I really love about Client Circle is our list builder. We allow you to create contact lists based on really any type of criteria you can imagine. And we then can bring all of those lists into um, our analytic product to show you uh, what's my breakdown of promoters uh, versus detractors. And um, even though this is demo data, this very some of these things are pretty similar to what you're going to see. So if I'm looking at my promoters, I've got 717 total active products and 710,000 or so in premium. But then when I go to detractors, um, we can see that it's quite a bit different. Uh, oops, sorry, I'm looking at promoters and detractors. But now if I look at just detractors, you know, I'm at 226 and 222,000. So you can really see how does one segment of people compare to the other. Uh, one of the things I like to do is have my uh, tabs open over here. And let me just stick my tabs for just a second. So if I have the tabs open in my browser, I can quickly uh, flip between the two and see the difference. And now you can see why, for example, in this case, it's so important to get people to become promoters because when they're promoters, they do stay longer and they buy more from you. And that is uh, something that has always been true. And now you're going to be able to see that in your data for yourself. And I'm super excited about that, uh, just to be able to uh, let you get a view into that and how, it, how amazing it is. Okay, so company list filters. Um, let's talk a little bit about by providers because we're looking at these things by the type of product um, but also I can go to by provider and this is going to then break down the uh, types of products differently by provider. And it's essentially uh, flipping the data on its side and it's allowing you then to say by provider, um, how are we looking? So um, I can even go into my company list here and say, is there a specific provider that is more heavy on my detractors? Because one thing we know is that Detractors happen a lot through the claims experience and other things. And um, as an agent, while you can influence that claims experience to some extent, sometimes it's out of your hands and you want to know what are the issues that are potentially uh, happening. So we can use our detractors list to say um, it looks like, honestly, in this case, the data is pretty similar, but um, I typically have a few more detractors when it comes to guardian shield insurance compared to the others. In fact, uh, I would say it's in, from a, a data significance standpoint, at least in this last week of data that we're looking at here or this month of data, um, it's significant enough to say we need to look into this guardian shield insurance and figure out what is going on. Why is it that we have more detractors there? So um, again, we hope that you'll be able to use these tools to really find trends in your data that you can then use to contact carriers and others to improve your business. Um, now, let's go back to type again. And actually, last night um, here in uh, Iowa, at least in Western Wyoming, we had a pretty bad storm. You might be wondering, uh, how many people could this be impacting? So um, I'm on my product dashboard and I'm going to actually just uh, go to homeowners insurance on here and we'll look at um, uh, maybe business interruption insurance or something like that on commercial. And then let's go look at our company list. Actually, we don't have too many. Hopefully I have someone in Iowa in this group. Uh, we'll see. If not, we'll, ah, no, we don't. So maybe that's that means that we're in the clear. Uh, but what we can do is, uh, let's just open this up to, to more uh, people and then we'll go to Iowa. So let's assume that um, I did have some people in Iowa. Again, it really shows you what an impact of specific area could be. And you know the neat part about this is this list is one that I built this morning and I just selected state Iowa, but you could easily use zip code, you could use address, you could use any kind of criteria you want 
to then segment your uh, your list data. And that's a really powerful tool uh, combined because from here, then you'll be able to actually create communications and you'll be able to send people information uh, that's relevant to them. And um, you'll also understand the impact dollar wise that that has on you. So a lot of times we might be saying, okay, I have this uh, segment of people that I want to communicate with, but you can't really easily put a dollar amount to that to understand an ROI and things. So this allows you to kind of combine our powerful list building feature, our communication system, and our data all in one to really be able to drive business decisions. Um, so uh, let's uh, take this filter off and we're back to here to our, you know, just all products. And um, the other thing that you can do and another filter that we have really quickly built in is just the product provider filter. So now I can filter all products just by, um, you know, the provider. And then that way I can see of these three, what are my active product count, my premium and things like that. So um, behind the scenes, uh, you know, I might say just one quick thing about this is that we are crunching billions of rows of data to be able to do this and to be able to look at it every day for every product, kind of what the numbers are. So um, I, I saw that query uh, come back in just, you know, a few seconds. And that's honestly um, a ton of engineering work and effort to, to put into this. I'm really proud of my team and uh, what they were able to put together here. So the fact that we made it very quick and easy for you to, to drill down is quite um, you know, amazing. We, we worked really hard on that. So uh, with that said though, if you have any feedback, please let us know because we're always uh, trying to make it better. So again, here on the product type field, um, now you'll see where the carrier uh, filter was before on the by type, we have the type filter. So if I want to look at what my breakdown is of auto insurance by carrier, I can do that uh, very easily. And you can see that these two Apex Insurance and Guardian Shield are typically, uh, you know, they have 31%, 28% of, of those products. Uh, which kind of looks to be similar on the uh, premium count as well. So you can kind of see where you uh, kind of condensed in terms of one uh, you know, part or the other. So there's so many different ways that you can look at this data. And I hope that you can spend hours just going in here and looking at your information to find it, you know, to look at things in a different way. And so I really feel like this is so much better than static reports that you might get uh, scheduled and sent to you. Uh, because you can really drill down and, and find the, the things that you want. So uh, coming soon, you know, there will be enhancements to be able to send you sort of scheduled reports. So kind of look out for those types of things. But uh, for now, uh, just the ability to really dig in and understand your data um, is, is quite amazing. And hopefully uh, you really like this uh, UI as well. We, we worked really hard to keep it clean and easy. Um, and before I move on to the next dashboard, I want to show you one other neat thing that we have is um, we have a quick about this dashboard section. In fact, that will pop up the first time you go into any new dashboard to kind of just give you generally an idea of what this uh, particular dashboard is. And then sort of an example use case for how you might uh, want to use this dashboard to just give you some ideas of, of, of how you'll uh, use it. So you will see that in there. Um, our little saved uh, uh, tab up here is also really nice because it's going to show you the things that you have saved that are showing uh, or potentially showing on your um, overview dashboard. So if you wanted to change um, your uh, dashboards uh, charts, you can click edit and then update those as well. So you'll be able to uh, quickly update those. So let's move on to the customer's dashboard because it's also another uh, really neat one. Uh, because this dashboard looks at data a little bit differently. It's not just looking at product count, but overall customer and or account uh, information. So you might lose one or two products or you know policies from, from a customer, but you still retain that customer. This is going to show you whether or not they're a brand new customer, whether they've entirely churned, and how many existing customers do you have. It's a really good way to look at customer retention. Um, you can see, for example, uh, this particular uh, customer is doing really well. They're 
you know, ranging from 99.6 to 100% retention, which is uh, pretty strong uh, here in July. But um, let's look at this full year. So we can go year to date. And now we can see, remember, we already kind of looked into that uh, March churn to say what happened here. And we can um, drill down into the same thing here. For example, we've already kind of seen the, the idea that, okay, possibly these eight that churned had some uh, negative feedback. Of course, sometimes uh, negative feedback is um, more than just one month. So if we go into what happened here, we can actually mod change our range and we can go a little bit further back. And now we can look all the way from February through March, and then we can look at our net promoter score and we can look for additional detractors that might have been an issue uh, before. So um, even though it's very quick and easy for you to look at uh, one particular range, you can uh, modify that, which is really nice. So again, coming soon, we'll be able to drill down into this 19 and see who are the 19 people that have churned. Um, for now, you're gonna see uh, the numbers uh, in general, but uh, you will see the breakdown by month, uh, which is really nice. But again, if you want to, you can take that same range, aggregate by day, and you can see by, for every day, how many customers uh, did we have and when did they churn? And now I can take this data and I can um, uh, bring it into Excel or whatever type of reporting tool that you might want to look at. So I really like how easy it is to change this aggregate by um, feature. I'm going to go ahead and reset that. We're going to go back to um, just last month. Okay, so um, actually I am going to do this year. Let's do uh, year to date. As we know, um, promoters and detractors can make a big difference on churn. So again, we make it really easy for you to look at, for example, uh, detractors and um, you know what they might look at in the data. So um, we can look at promoters as well, unresolved, um, or oh, that's, this is why I created these lists this morning. I can look at uh, things by range. Um, and a lot of companies, and, and I'm sure um, a lot of people on this uh, you know, call, they're thinking about who their ideal customer is, what kind of customer profile are you going after? Um, are you going after specific uh, generations or do you have products that are more uh, you know, um, targeted toward different people? Um, is it people under 40? Is it people you know, uh, 65 and older you know, uh, to be able to get different types of, of products? So we can look at our under 40, a crowd, and then I can say, um, how many of those people have I sold uh, renters, travel, um, and mm, I'll say auto insurance too. And you can kind of look at, uh, it looks to me like I have um, been doing an okay job, at least, of keeping those customers, and I have also churned three. Uh, so I think yeah. So this, again, is a really good way for you to just really dig into your data and understand um, who is it that you're selling to? And are you matching that ideal customer profile that, you, that you're targeting? So um, I really love this uh, part of the tool because um, a lot of times we're targeting specific type of marketing to people, um, but we don't know if it's really landing. And this is how you're going to be able to, to do that. Um, we can change to look at 65 or older, and you can see those types of products that I selected are not as interesting to those people, right? So um, I really like this uh, part of the tool because it helps you understand, have you really, um, you know, uh, done what you thought you wanted to do and in terms of, of targeting those specific people? You might also use it to spot opportunities, right? So um, I can look at uh, specific products and um, if it's renters, for example, that you want to um, sell to a different um, you know, group, you can pull up just renters insurance and then you can look at your list in those areas and see where might you do a better job at, at uh, you know, finding that, that group of people.
So uh, the customer section is really nice. I love the ability to really dig in and uh, slice and dice your data um, from those uh, different customer segments. Okay, so let's go into communications really quickly. Um, I'm going to hit just a few more dashboards today, and then I'm going to um, let you get into your accounts and drill down and really understand these. But this is uh, another important one that I want to show because um, a lot of people have requested uh, open stats and click stats and things like that in our system. And uh, we really felt that to do it well, we had to have a tool like analytics to be able to show you the data, but then also show you how it's related to, um, you know, the campaigns and things that you're running and the product results, I should say, that that you have. Uh, you know, we don't think that it's enough to just say, here's the open rate and click rate of a specific campaign. We want to show how it drove real change in the product. And to be able to do that, we needed to have a platform like this where you can look at those two things together. Because to be quite honest, whether or not an email is clicked makes no difference. The most important thing is, did it drive business results? And that's what we want to see. And with this tool, we can actually show that. Because uh, if I have a specific campaign, and now this a particular demo account only has a couple of of uh, what we call campaigns in here, and it's uh, simply our uh, a survey and new customer emails. But I can look at just my surveys, for example, over time, and I'm going to uh, open this up, and I'm going to say uh, year to date, so I have a little bit more data to work with here, and I can look overall how have my survey has been doing. Um, it looks like I'm getting 40 have been sent, 35 opened, and 20 clicked. That's pretty good for, for surveys. But let's imagine for a second this isn't a survey campaign that I selected, but instead it is um, a, a cross-sell campaign. And I'm going to see how is that campaign doing over time. But then, again, I can say what happened here, right? And then I can go look at product changes and say, oh, this campaign actually drove some real results. And that to me is the coolest thing about this whole tool because as a marketing automation platform, we want to be able to show you that it's making a difference on your, in your data. And we can do that within five seconds, right? To be able to get in there and look at it. So I love the fact that we can combine those two things together. Uh, super, super important that, that you can do that. Um, so one of the other cool things that um, you might have seen as I was opening these dots is there is another button here called Create Event. And you might have even seen the list of events that, that was empty there for a second. Let me just create an event for you real quick. And uh, we can say uh, maybe we had um, a customer, um, you know, appreciation day and i'm going to just set a nice little marker how about uh yeah we'll do the little hard eyes uh customer event at the office to um, say thanks for being a customer something like that I'm just going to hit save without putting in a category for now. And now we have this nice little um, you know, chart or this icon that is on um, the, uh, the chart. But what's neat is as I scroll down, you're going to see that on all of the different pieces of data. In fact, let's go back to some of the charts that we looked at before. And we're going to say we're going to change our date to make sure that we get uh, year to date in here. And you can see there's our customer appreciation day also on that um, event. So again, uh, super excited about um, you know that 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 feature because uh, there's other types of events that you might want to to mark. You know, so for example, let's say you acquired some new business, and you see that have a really large uh, impact on your data, and also you want to be able to mark that in the future to know. Okay, that's why that specific thing happened. So 
If I go to what happened here, you can see now I have that customer appreciation day on that event. And it makes it a little bit clear for you in the future as you're doing your digging on data, um, you know, once you figure out maybe what happened, you put an event and then that data, that marker is available across all of your charts so that you can help cross reference um, information. So we really like that feature. Um, we think that as you're playing around with the data in here, it's going to be a nice way to kind of keep track of the things that you're learning from the information. So um, all of the same filters with company list are available on all of the accounts. So for example, um, I can look at my under 40 list and if I select my surveys, I can see, are they more likely to respond to my surveys than people that are um, in a different generation? So if I just select surveys, for example, I can look at that and, and see the data here. So you can see it is a little bit different. In fact, uh, they didn't do much in April, but they certainly did in June and um, also in January. So uh, it's almost like this group is getting, you know, something every few months and uh, they're not so interested otherwise. But uh, of course, this is sample data, so it's not always going to be reflective of what you're going to see. But now you have the ability to slice and dice the data and see exactly what's going on. So, OK. Uh, we've got a couple more I think I might hit, uh, but then I'm going to probably let you all go because we're uh, at 1236 here. I want to save a little bit of time for questions. But um, retention is a really neat uh, uh, tool because uh, this is the first place where you're going to see the employee comparison tab. And this particular demo account doesn't have a lot of employee data, so you're not going to see uh, much in here. But I encourage you to go check out your account and look at the employee comparison because it allows you to look at um, how retention uh, differs uh, based upon the employee that's, that is in the account. Um, so again, this one, this demo data doesn't really have a lot of uh, information in this section, but uh, yours should have more. You can look at how many people are churning for that uh, based upon the employee versus downgrades and upgrades. It allows you to kind of look at your, your team from different angles. But retention is all about, uh, this would be more premium and revenue retention um, numbers. So uh, very similar features and capabilities of all of the other data, um, except uh, it's all based on uh, customer, uh, sorry, um, uh, premium and revenue retention. Churn information, um, this is really um, just not just the retention, you know, in terms of how many people you're keeping, but specifically looking at the, the account revenue that you have lost and uh, why. Was it voluntary, meaning the person chose to cancel, or was it delinquent, meaning they canceled because they didn't pay or payments didn't work and things like that? So uh, voluntary and delinquent churn are really uh, good numbers to be able to track um, to say, why are people uh, leaving? And again, you can break that down by provider. We make that very easy for you to filter as well. Um, our sales dashboard, again, this particular demo um, de uh, demo account does not have um, a ton, any uh, sales information. But I want to just show you some of the things that you'll be able to slice and dice. Now, these sales numbers are going to be based upon the product data that's in your management system. So uh, we're going to look at uh, premium by, you know, uh, what has been lo lost in terms of quotes that, uh, you know, went out there that uh, did not become accounts versus what was one. You can slice and dice that by employee. Of course, you can look at number of quotes. You can look at quotes by employee, time to close. I wish I had a little bit more data uh, to go into this one, but if I did, I would probably have spent the entire hour talking about this one. Um, but I really encourage you to go and, and check uh, in your account and talk with um, our team to really see how this particular dashboard is going to work uh, for you. So I'm going to go back to the uh, dashboard here. I'm going to stop share and I'm going to go to slides here. And um, I want to just, uh, I think I mentioned this, if you are a customer, there's a good chance that you have this available in your account. Most of our customers are on our premium plan or on a plan that has access to this. 
Um, and that's where this is available. So this is on our premium plan. If you're not on a premium plan, you may need to upgrade to be able to get this. Um, it is, um, you know, uh, available though to a lot of our customers because most of our customers are on that premium plan. So um, talk to your account manager that can help you get set up with it if it's not available. Um, if you're a new customer or if um, you uh, are just learning about Client Circle, then we can demo this in more detail, uh, clientcircle.com slash demo, and uh, we'll have you schedule some time with someone to uh, really show you around. So um, I want to answer a few questions. I'm going to leave this slide up. I'm going to put my face back on here. And um, let's see what we have um, for q and A's. if anything. I think some of them have already been answered, so that's pretty cool. Um, Actually, I do have um, one question that I see is just in general um, around data. Uh, and if I'm on this system or that system, um, what can I expect? So we, before we launched this, have worked with our account management team to talk through a lot of the different data needs and how they will work with specific management systems. And that question is a really good one to have with your account manager because they will know your account. They know how your file import is working. Um, if you're on, you know, management system A, um, what it's going to take to be able to get this stuff in. Something that I've always said is that the more data, the better uh, for agencies that have done that and they've put a lot of data in here, you're going to see it automatically for things that are in the dashboard and you see zeros or you see things not popping up that you want to be in there, then we just trace that back to um, where it needs to be on a file import and then we can bring it in. One of the great things about this tool and what makes it so effective is that uh, we've built a lot of algorithms and tools to be able to sort of backdate information. So a lot of times when you import a file with sort of current information, and maybe you give us some sort of prior policy information as well, we can then backdate that and say, on this day, what did your account look like? By, by running all kinds of, of rules and saying, okay, if it was January 1st, 2001, what did your data look like? And we can uh, do that for you uh, automatically. So super excited about that type of feature. Um, so, uh, let's see what other things. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I've answered a lot of these other questions. So um, I'm just scrolling through the uh, the comments here. So Justin, uh, thank you very much. I'm glad you love our tools, and we work really, really hard to uh, continue to improve things. And I hope that everybody on this call sees that. Uh, sometimes when you don't hear something from Client Circle in a while, it means that we're working really hard on a cool feature and uh, we're just going to uh, launch it and say, here you go, world. And uh, that's what uh, you know we want to do. So um, this is not going to be the, uh, the final uh, discussion over analytics in our platform. We're going to continue to enhance this. I want to make it the best ever um you know analytic tool that you have and we're going to continue to do that and i can do that with your feedback so please share your uh, feedback with uh your account management team we take it all in and we make enhancements uh sometimes it might not be you know that week it might be a couple months it might be um you know a little bit longer but we do uh work really hard to get to those two um and i think kevin would be a great webinar host by the way um especially if I have a steady stream of treats, then uh, <laughs> he would really love it. So I wish I had a treat for him at the door when he was here, but um, I think he just wanted to say hi. He literally came over to the office uh, right when the webinar started. He just wanted to say hi. Um, he is uh, one of the most loving dogs I know, and we're super happy that he can uh, be in the office with us on a regular basis. So, um, Everyone, thank you very much for joining today. I'm going to leave you again with this demo uh, link and also talk to your account manager. You'll know how to get a hold of them to be able to answer those questions. And um, thank you all very much for being Client Circle customers and giving us feedback 
and and letting us serve you and make this product the best that it can possibly be. So thank you very much. I hope everybody has a great rest of your week and we will talk to you again soon.